At four is the symposium tomorrow. I ain't going to give you my secrets. <laughs> now, I will tell you a thing or two. The symposium will be centered around baseball, life, college, that kind of thing. Uh, enlightenment in terms of how you can prepare yourselves for college, academically, athletically. But more than just becoming a professional athlete, we want to talk about other opportunities for you. And that's basically what the symposium is about. Other avenues in which you can stay in professional sports and maybe make some of these decisions. Good afternoon, everyone. I think what this symposium is about more than anything else is, and I wrote on my sheet, opportunities. Opportunities for you and opportunities for us because we have the opportunity to reach down and touch you and mentor to you because that's what we are supposed to do. And then we would like to have you reach down and touch one of your friends in your neighborhood, in your area, in your school that you know should not be where they are and you've given up on them. They just need a little help. They just need to know that you really care about them and that you're willing to help them get to where they should be. And that's here with us. I think we've given up on too many of our friends. We've given up on too many of our young people. We look out, use the old cliche, we're judging the book by the cover, not the heart and the mind of the individuals. Each one of you, one helps one and one helps another. We started this journey, God bless me. I've been blessed for 74 years. This journey started when I was a young man in St. Petersburg, Florida. I was blessed to have a father who played in the old Negro League. I was blessed to have a father who listened to this very carefully because it doesn't happen very often, who one year after he died had a ballpark named in his honor. That usually happens 30 to 40, 50 years after you've gone. My father, not because he was my father, but because he was a great man and a good person who cared about everyone, not just his own personal family. I did not get to play shortstop when I was a kid because I was my father's son. I got to play shortstop because I earned it. And my father told me so. You are out there because you earned it. And had you not earned that position, you would not be standing at that position. We've got to be dedicated. We've got to learn our history. We've got to know why we're here. We've got to know the people whose shoulders we stand upon. And we need to get back to getting ourselves back into organized baseball. After we finish our college education, most of us. I leave that part to Dr. White, but there are some things that I like to speak about when it comes to education. And one, I wish and hope and pray that we'd go back to extra curricular activities. Some of you may not even know what that phrase means. When I was in school, you had to maintain a certain grade point average in order to do anything. Auxiliary. You could not play football, basketball, baseball, band, whatever the case might be, if you did not maintain a certain grade point average. I am of the opinion that if you really want to do something, you can do it. If you really want to play sports in high school, and you have to maintain a certain grade point average, you will maintain that average because otherwise you will not be permitted to play. 
we always hear we're doing our kids a great service because he's a great athlete, but academically he's a bit shaky. I'll tell you where the disservice comes. When he breaks his leg, can't play anymore. When he hurts that arm, can't pitch anymore. When he does something and he can't shoot that rock anymore, and he can't run that pigskin anymore, and he's only 25 years old. Oh, and by the way, in today's lifespan, I think, am I correct? Somebody help me if I'm not. I think it's 75 for men. Am I correct? African American males. So what happens to you for the next 50 years of your life, and you are no longer an athlete? One thing about professional athletics, when you are out of my sight, you are out of my mind. I care nothing about you. Oh, and by the way, if you are blessed enough to sign a professional contract, I want you to hear this. We signed five people from the University of Maryland. We signed 10 from NYU. We signed 15 from USC. We signed 12 from Florida. We signed five from Alabama. We signed eight from LSU. Are you getting a picture here? Which means that every single day that you go on that baseball field, he's trying to take your job. Those guys that they gave all that money to from all those schools and universities, they didn't just give them to them because they liked them. They gave it to them because they can produce a service. If that service happens to be better than what you are doing, see ya. Think about this. They're telling you, see you later, and I'm only 25 years old. I have an additional 50 years to support my wife and family. How do I do that? Oh, and by the way, I forgot. I did not finish college. I do not have anything in which to fall back on. So how do I make my living? You make your living with those guys that you got to go out there and bring back to the fold. Your homies, the term is a little something in the pocket, a little change in the hand. You're destroying other people's lives with the drugs that you push and sell. You're destroying other people's lives with the gun that you take to somebody's home and somebody's business and you rob them because you chose, listen to this very carefully, you chose to give up on you. Professional athletics didn't give up on you. You did because you didn't do what it took to live for the remainder of your life, not the first 25 years of your life. I pray to God, my God in heaven, that you are blessed to wear one of these that says San Francisco Giants on it, that says LA Dodgers on it, that says New York Yankees on it, that says Chicago Cubs on it, because you then have truly been blessed. But we always talk about one other thing when it comes to that. Most of us will forget where we came from. We will forget the people that helped us get to where we'd like to go or where we'd like to be. And then we just step on those people on our way up. There's another part to that story. Because those are the same people you pass on your way back down. Don't forget. Apply yourself. You have to apply yourself. I used to know the numbers. I used to have the numbers. It's something like one out of every 100,000. Which means none of us in here we we'll get to the big leagues today because there's not enough of us in here. 
God rest his soul, Arthur Ashe did that survey. And then to piggyback that on that survey, if you were one of the 100,000, four of the next half million played in the major leagues, but they only lasted for four years. So if you get to the big leagues now, like they do very, very early, you're not yet quite 25. So you don't even have the full 50 years. You have a little more than 50 years to live the remainder of your life and support your wife and children. Oh, and don't forget mom. And don't forget grandma. <laughs> and let me tell you something. As long as you live, you will learn to find out there's nothing in this life other than the good Lord like grandmothers. Grandmothers are special. I'm going to tell this one grandmother story and then I'm going to move on. In the 60s, we played 8 o'clock games. Nobody was allowed into the stadium until one hour before game time. We were on the road and we were in Cincinnati, Ohio. We're taking batting practice. And my grandmother used to call me just plain boy. Boy? I am in the batting cage and I hear that boy. Didn't even faze me at all. Because I know nobody belongs in here but us. There's nobody in the stadium but the Reds and the Dodgers. Boy? <laughs> no. By this time, boy, the voice is getting a little louder. And I step out of the box and I'm going now. I do know this voice. <laughs> so I took my last swing. I come out of the cave. Boy! <laughs> I go, I look over to my left because you come out of the cage and I turn around and here's grandma. Grandma's at the rail. Not only is she in the stadium, she's down on the rail. <laughs> oh, down by the field. I walk over to her. Hey, Grandma, what the heck are you doing here? What are you doing? How did you get in here? And I never want you to forget what she said verbatim, and this was 60 years ago. Remember this, please. Grandmothers have a way of doing things. That's all she said. And I just looked at her, and I, and I never forgot those words till this day. Grandmas have a way of getting stuff done. So I want you to think. I want you to be individual thinkers. Say two heads are better than one. Okay, well, be collective thinkers. I see some twins over here. See some folks over here. Those are your homies. Don't let your homies do the wrong thing. The worst thing you can possibly do is tell me you're my best friend, but whatever I do is okay with you. Knowing that it is wrong is two left shoes. You have to make them man up. Don't sit still for what you know is not right. Tell them that. Same thing when the baseball field. Don't tell the guy he had a bad day or a good day when you know he didn't. If you are his friend that you say you are, you're going to tell him the truth. There's a possibility he may not speak to you for a day or two or three. <laughs> Maybe longer. But if he really is your friend, and he really does care about you and your welfare and your well-being, you're going to come to him and tell you, man, I'm sorry, but you were right. That was not the right thing to do. That was not the proper thing to do. Man up. Do the right thing. This opportunity that you have is given to a lot of people. This opportunity that you have here 
is given to a few, as you can see. Doesn't mean that we didn't extend it to a lot of people. They didn't think we could pull it off, so they chose not to come. Guess what? Look around. Here we are. First annual. First annual. And you are a very intricate part of that. Something you can carry for the rest of your natural life. I was one of the first. 20 years from now, when you come back to represent Fred and Piper Davis, you can say, I was one of the first. Not very many people can say that. It will mean a lot to you then. You would have had your college. You would have had your children. You would have bought your home. You would have finished your career. And you're coming back to do what we came back here for. Not to beg, but to give of yourself. Fred never asked me for one dime. He only asked me to give him a few days of my time. I came all the way from Oakland, California. Didn't faze me one bit because of the magnitude of this. Because they care so much about all of you and all of us. You got any idea how long they have been doing this? I'm guessing, Fred, if I'm wrong, you tell me. Is it 47 years? 47 years. Long time. To give of yourself for the good of others. The Bible says, treat your neighbor as your friend. As yourself, I'm sorry. Treat your neighbor as yourself. I can't think of a better neighbor to have than Fred. I just want you to think about life, about the journey. Don't want you to think about the end, just the journey. The journey is the most beautiful thing that you can ever dream of, you can ever think of, you can ever phantom. Who would have thought a barefooted, southern, deep southern young man in the 60s when there wasn't that many of us being signed out of the deep south would make it all the way to the major leagues and play for a while? I want you to have this opportunity that I've had, that we've had. There's nothing like it. When you hear somebody win a championship at this level, and then you hear the interviewer ask, how do you feel right at this moment? And you hear their answer. And that answer is, most of them say, I can't tell you what I feel right now. I don't really know. And the next word will be, it's just euphoric. I can't explain it. I can. I know exactly how they feel. Because I've had that opportunity, thank God. To be there when they want it all. And there is nothing in this world like it. Maybe mom can say it's having my first child. That's you for it for me. Or somebody that has done it before and won it before because they know how they feel right at that moment. It's just unbelievable because you say, 
When I was a kid, and you hear this all the time, this is what I dreamed of. And that's exactly. Every single one of you in here, if you have aspirations of playing at a big league level in some major sport, you've dreamed of it. Ever since you were knee-high to a duck, you've dreamed of that moment. And when it happens, you don't have the words to explain because realistically, even though you have all this ability and all this talent, you have to be blessed enough to be in the right place at the right time with the right individual that's making decisions about your life. Working in the minor leagues many, many years, we go in a back room we, hold your hand up, pitching. We decide your fate. Believe that? You go out and work out all day, and you see me with my pad, and I'm taking notes. At the end of a day of spring training, we have a meeting just like this with all of us, and we decide your fate. We either enhance your dream or we destroy it. We take away your dream. Does that make us feel good? No, I almost got fired once. Because I told my farm director, I cannot do that. I can't tell people that they are getting released. And I was just a minor league manager. And he says, how do you think I feel? You only have to tell one person. And every spring, I have to tell 10 to 50 people that they are done. So if you can't do that one, I suggest you pack your bag and head back to Oakland. Don't have your fate decided in the back room. Two major things that will help you. Be the first one out there. Be the last one to leave. And perfect, perfect practice makes perfect. Practice does not. You can go stay out there for a month. And if you're doing it incorrectly, you're going to do it incorrectly. Perfect practice makes perfect. I'm glad we're here in Birmingham. You've got a kid that... We just signed in Oakland to play wide receiver for us, for the Raiders. You talk, and he talked about how he's up every morning, every single morning at 5 o'clock, and he's out doing his thing. 5 o'clock, Oakland, baby, I'm gone. I'm down. The people in New York are asleep. People in California are asleep. Missouri, Michigan, Montana, Utah. We're all asleep. And what is he doing? Enhancing his skills. Because he has that desire. He has that dedication. And he has that concentration. And if I'm up at five every single morning of my life, I have that tremendous thing that you can't teach. And that's the will to win. So I leave this with you. Don't be asleep. <laughs> because there are people across the country who are trying to get their programs together while you sleep. Don't be asleep. Don't sleep on your opportunity. If you are not blessed to make it as a player, don't give up. Because there are a number of other things you can do with that college education that you have. And we'll start at the bottom. You can become a groundskeeper. Have some horticultural skills. How do you think these fields get taken care of? Somebody's got to take care of them. Why do you think you don't see that many bad hops in the big leagues? Because those fields are manicured, baby. And you also realize 
twice during the course of the game, they are dragged and redragged. We can't have big league ball players making too many errors. They got to have that ball bouncing true. Don't turn your nose up at the groundskeeper. Because you know how you go to a restaurant and you slip the waiter or waitress a little something, something? Don't think the shortstop in the second baseman doesn't realize. I got a little extra something right here. Appreciate what you did. The little guy that bunts and the ball doesn't go foul, like I saw on TV two nights ago. I just got one base hit, one more base hit. So don't turn your nose up at the groundskeeper. Keep them in mind when something happens and it enhances you and your career. You can become a receptionist in the office. Answer the phone. Then you, come, you can become administrative assistant to the owner, the president, the general manager, the assistant general manager. Are you getting the picture here? Don't give up on yourself. Because that college education is now going to work for you. Remember, you're one of those people whose hearts we broke in the back room. But you're not dead. You're still living. And you still have an opportunity to stay in this game. Whatever that chooses to be, whichever profession it chooses to be, Whichever major league level it chooses to be, or minor league level it chooses to be. You could be in charge of community relations for that particular organization. And that means when you have a function like this, and you want somebody to come out, you call the community relations department, and they're going to send out a young man that's going to talk to you about what goes on. You could be in charge of human resources for that office. You could hire that community relations person. You can hire that public relations person. You can become the manager of that office. You can become the director of ticket sales. There are a number of things you can do because you said, even though I wasn't blessed to be a player, I still want to somehow stay around this game. Opportunity is right here. You can become a farm director. A farm director is like the general manager of the major league team. He or she runs the whole minor leagues, which has with it player development. Player development is where Tommy and I work. Oh, sorry about that. Where the three of us work. We work You just came to us. You just got drafted, and we gave you two mil, baby. <laughs> and now that your scout, your scout is going to give him to us. We are player development. It's our responsibility now to get you to San Francisco. New York, Chicago, Philadelphia. That's our responsibility. We're the ones that are going to spend all day with you for six weeks developing and honing your skills. You could be in charge of that. Now, things that fall under the farm director, some of the stuff we did this morning, and that is that individual who is in charge of player development, Field coordinator. The field coordinator. Sit down. 
The field coordinator writes up all of the daily work that we're going to do. Today we might do cutoffs and relays, we might do PFPs, we might do a little hitting, we might do a little base running, we might do a little pickoffs and rundowns, we might do a little pop-up communication. The field coordinator is a guy who decides what we're going to do on each day. Oh, and by the way, he's got some people that work under him. He has a hitting coordinator, he has a pitching coordinator, he has a bunting and base running coordinator. We all fall under the umbrella of the field coordinator. So you see, you are still hanging around the game, doing some positive things, and the optimum phrase is, with that college education you have, Now, we get up to the big boys. You can be a trainer. You can be in charge of conditioning for the major league club. You can be a batting practice pitcher for the major league club. Oh, and by the way, no, 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 no. Not as much anymore. When we were in the big leagues, we had our own batting practice pitcher. We didn't use each other to throw batting practice. Now the coaches have to throw batting practice. But still, at the big league level, they have specific guys. Because I have a nasty lefty coming up tonight at Kershaw. And we have a left-handed batting practice pitcher. And then we have a right-handed batting practice pitcher. So you see, just because that arm didn't get too many guys out and you didn't get to go and stay in this stadium and make the big buckets, you're still in the game and you are still in uniform and now you are still at the big league level. Throwing batting practice. Getting tick what, how many we get? Four tickets a game? Give to your family, give to your partners? Still, these are things you can do if you're not blessed. Then you can become an advanced scout. I bet no one in here knows what an advanced scout does. Not you guys. <laughs> Take a guess. An advanced scout. What does he do? What does she do? Say it again. What did he say? Advanced thing. That does advanced thing. A scout that does advanced does, 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 no, You are absolutely right, but I need to know what those advanced things are. <laughs> an advanced scout is an individual. We're going to go from here to Montgomery tomorrow, and we're going to play th three games up at Montgomery. So you know what you're going to do? Go you're going to go to Montgomery. And you're going to scout Montgomery. You're going to bring that information to us when we get to the clubhouse in Montgomery. And then we're going to have our meeting about the information that you've gathered. And we're going to play our offense and our defense accordingly. That is a very, very, very important job. Again, still in uniform. You can become a traveling secretary. The traveling secretary is responsible for some of the most important stuff, like that big old pretty bus that, where did it, where did it go? Oh, <laughs> that big old pretty white bus we rode in today is responsible for getting a travel reservation responsible for getting the bus from the airport to the hotel. He's responsible for making hotel reservations. He's responsible for making reservations from the hotel to the ballpark and back. But the most important thing he's responsible for, that hundred, how much are we getting to you? $125 a day, meal money? 
Listen to what I'm saying. $125 a day meal money. You know what I did with my meal money when I was in spring training? I never spent any of my salary. I spent my meal money. All my salary went. I didn't have to spend my salary. And even at the end of spring training, we have what we call the little envelope. My wife calls it the little envelope. When she needs a little something, where is that little envelope? <laughs> because she knows it's full of spring training meal money. I mean, how, how much food can you eat for $125 a day? Every day for six weeks. I put that baby away, let me tell you. So you see, traveling secretary. Can be. Yeah, tell them that. Oh, and by the way, Jesus, Tom, how can I forget that? Oh, and by the way, the visiting clubhouse, they provide food for you. So you still get to keep the full 125 unless you choose to go out and have dinner someplace. Remember how I said you take care of the groundskeeper? Well, at the end of the three-day period, you slip the visiting clubhouse guy a little something, something, because he just saved you the majority of your meal money. That's right. When we go to the visiting clubhouse, and when I mean they have a spread, they have a spread. The guy in Houston should have opened up his own restaurant. What was his name, T? Pete was going to Pete. Huh? Pete was in Houston. The guy Pete from Houston. Pete had four entrees. Every night he had four entrees. Chicken, steak, whatever, whatever. Some other stuff, some other stuff, some other. Pete's table went all the way from that table to this table. This is food for the visiting team after the game. Oh, and by the way, got a little refrigerator here. It's full of stuff. Got a cooler over here. It's full of stuff. Man, I mean, you could get fat being in the big leagues. <laughs> Those are the kind of things. We talked about the field coordinator. We did not talk about the director of scouting. Now you're in charge of all of the scouts across the country. All of the little nicks and crooks and crannies where you run into scouts. This guy is in charge of all of them. And then there are those scouts. High school scouts, college scouts, major league scouts. So you still got the uniform on. Director of player personnel, which only has to do with major league players. Now we get to the big boys. You can become the general manager of the Chicago Cubs, the New York Mets, Yankees, Phillies, Reds, Cardinals, you can become the general manager, making every decision about every ball player and every scout and every advanced scout. All of these people fall under your umbrella. You're the man. You're going to make trades. You're going to release some people. You're going to make sure that your people you're scouting people, draft the right people. Your developmental department, develop people, get them to you at the big league level. And then I have a friend that I work for with the Chicago White Sox. He is now the president of the Chicago White Sox. So he's actually the boss of everybody under him. Everybody who who I just talked to prior, he's the boss. And there's only one person above him, and that's the owner, Mr. Reinsdorf. His name is Kenny Williams. He's the president of the Chicago White Sox. So you see, if they take away your uniform and you still would like to be in the game, here are all these opportunities. And the way to get started is to write to every club 
and tell them you would like to intern with their organization. And the one thing about opportunity is you first have to get your foot in the door. And there's no better way of getting your foot in the door than becoming a volunteer intern. And last, we have two owners that I know of, of major league franchises. Michael Jordan owns Charlotte. Magic owns the Dodgers. So you see, guys, if you don't or if you're not blessed enough to keep the uniform on, you can still be a very, very intricate, important part of any major sport franchise with all of this information we just gave you. Last thing I'd like to leave you, and I'm going to read it to you. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Thank you. I just want to thank you guys all for getting involved and kicking this thing off. And we know next year, I think President has thing doubled up. So I want to thank you guys for supporting. Let's have some good baseball this weekend. And have fun. I'm going to turn the mic over to the big man, Mr. Freddie P. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Dick. Uh, what we got going now, uh, we want to just give all of our players, coaches, uh, parents, for taking the time to come out. Let's give all of them a big round of applause. Now what we're gonna have here now is uh, the Piper Davis Inner City National Tournament daughter. Miss Faye Davis will throw out the first pitch. And if you have a word, here's Miss Faye Davis, uh, Piper Davis' daughter. Good morning.